Welcome to the Powerful and Positive People Podcast. You're tuned in right now with Coach Mark the Spark, and today's guest is Kylie Chavinson. Uh, our goal here on this podcast is to empower other people through seeing other people go through challenges as well and how they came out on the other side being victorious and becoming even more powerful and positive due to the fact of that amazing challenge. So the whole goal is understanding that either things happen to us or for us. And that change of the mindset yeah. is amazing. So today we have Kylie Chavinson. Kylie Chavinson, one of our top martial artists here at Underground Martial Arts. And you are how old? I'm 15. 15 years old. And um, when did you start the martial arts? When I was nine. Nine years old. I remember, I remember on the, <laughs> I still have the video. When you're on the video, you were in line as a nine year old. We were waiting to warm up and the song was on. And I was going through with the camera and everybody's waving. And all of a sudden I get to you. You're like moving your shoulders, <laughs> moving your head back and forth. And I was like, oh man, this girl's got some good style and good dance yeah. moves. So that was an amazing beginning having you with us. Um, Today, you're a black belt. Yeah, I'm going for second degree second in the degree spring. In the springtime, so that's going to be awesome. Yeah, and so you're excited. on our elite leadership team. Yeah. Um, and uh, for those that are listening right now, Kylie's, like I said, she's one of our black belts, one of our top teammates on teams on the mat. That's why she's part of our elite leadership. So she's an amazing role model for all the other little girls and boys on our mat. So today, our interview, let's rock. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so... I'm a sophomore at the high school. Um, I'm super involved with school and I love writing and I love coming here just because like I feel like it's such a positive environment and it's like just a really good place to be and the people here, adults, kids, teenagers, every, it's like parents, everybody's just so amazing. Nice. Now you said writing. Um, what do you mean writing? Like you just like writing or you actually, do you write books? Yeah, so I just got done writing a book so I'm in the middle of like revising it and Kind of like rewriting a little bit of it right now. So. Very cool, very cool. Would you love to be an author one day? Yeah, that's yeah. Like definitely a dream of mine. But you know what? It, do it doesn't have to be a dream. Now, like, you can literally yeah. write your story, put it up online on Fiverr, or there's something called Elance, and you can have someone edit it for you for like 50 bucks. They can put it all in a book format, and then it's done. So that's the cool part about technology. You can do so much more, so much faster. You don't have to wait yeah. for a publishing company, you can do it yourself. Which is, I think would be awesome. I, yeah. I say we do it for your second degree black belt goal. I like that. Why don't we have the book finish okay. for your second degree black belt. Like Coach Josh, he wrote his book. Mm -hmm. And that was his, that was his personal goal in order to become a coach. So he did the self-development book called the, the what is it? Uh, oh, shoot. What is it called? 10 lessons in life or something like that. Yeah. Oh, I got to check it. Sorry, Coach Josh, if you're listening to this. Um, so you started when you were nine. Why did you Why did you start the martial arts? Um, well, when I was younger, I wasn't super active. So, like, you came to my school. Oh, uh, did I really? Yeah. What school was it? Bells. Bells. <clears throat> Rock the Bells. Yeah. That's LL Cool J. You know who LL Cool J is? Yeah. All Ladies right. love Cool James. Oh, yeah! You get, you get points for that one. <laughs> um, and my mom was friends with you. So she was like, you're going to try out Crowley. And I was like... I mean, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your mom and I are friends. We, were in high, we went to high school mm -hmm. together. We graduated together. Yeah. She bullied me a little bit. Uh, I believe it. Nah. <laughs> we got mom on the side right now, <laughs> on the sidelines, listening in on us. So it's pretty cool. Um, uh, so you started, mm -hmm. and you started because your mom put you in it. You saw me at the assembly. So you went home, and you obviously you had to tell mom about yeah. it. But what was the spark? You heard me at the assembly. What was the reason why you um, wanted to do it? I like the energy because it was just like a spark such a positive energy and like even like so many negative things can be happening like in the world and like you come here and it's so positive everybody's high-fiving everyone everybody's saying good job everyone's like kind of hyping each right. other up so. well, they, they say like attracts like yeah so me being out there at the assembly you had like a connection you know in, mm -hmm. in your gut like man this is I like this vibe to where you like this so much that you wanted more of it so I think that's cool because I, when I come out of the schools, I don't do any wild demonstrations and karate to where it's like, oh, I want to break a board. You sincerely love the character of it, which is awesome. Um, so a big part of this podcast is interviewing people on a struggle that they have went through their life. Some that really tested you emotionally, uh, physically possibly, or and just really tested your fortitude or just your own feeling about your self-worth possibly, and but how you got through it and being on the other side to where now you're more powerful and positive because of that struggle. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, what is one struggle that you have gone through in your life? Probably my parents were separated. 
that was okay. like a big thing for me because it's like it's like yeah there's people around you that are always there for you but it's kind of like you feel kind of like alone in the situation because like there's like arguing going on and you're trying to figure everything out and like when I like when everything happened I didn't really have like any like best friends I guess so it kind of like I didn't have anybody to go to for it and like and you're an only child right I am so the, the really feel left out that must have really hit you hard because Obviously, when sometimes when you're dealing with uh, a uh, uh, child, you get spoiled. So, yeah. okay, go ahead. And it was kind of just like, like I feel like too, like when you like have siblings, you can kind of relate to them because they're in the same exact right. situation as you, and everybody's situation is kind of different. And I think that and like just like kind of growing up and like my parents like still kind of arguing like here and there. It was like it definitely affected me like. Just like there was like really good days and there were super bad days too, which everyone, how did it affect your life? Um, just because like it was more like I could rely obviously more on my mom because I lived with her and like she's my number one person always. So it was like she was more the person I could go to other than my dad. So like that like kind of like bummed me out because like I see all my friends with their dads and I was like, whoa, like I don't have that, but. But you know what? It's a scary statistic. More more parents are divorced, you know? Yeah. At that time, did you feel like you were alone? Uh, obviously, you said that, but did you feel like you were the only one that was going through it because all the other friends had their parents? So, at the time, all of my friends' parents were together, so I definitely, yeah, I kind of felt like alone in that situation because none of my friends understood yeah. it. Like, they're like parents would like argue and they'd be like oh like my parents are gonna get divorced or like my parents aren't gonna be together anymore and I would be like I don't think that's it like right. it's a lot more than that so like but like, as I'm getting older now like a lot of my friends parents aren't together so I feel like now we kind of all like bond with that because like we all understand each other's struggles a yes, little more yes because you guys all have been through the bottom of you know life so to speak within the family realm yeah. you know that's hard split up just between your parents, let alone, you know, worrying about you. You know, it's funny, you always hear parents, and if you're a parent out there, and you're going through a divorce, and a lot of times we say, or you say, oh, the kids are fine. Yeah. And they're not fine. You know what I mean? Especially as, or if you're a teenager at the time, you got to really dig. And it looks like you're going through life okay, but you're really not. Yeah, especially because I feel like they always say, like, oh, look, it's not your fault, but it's, like, still always, like, the constant thought in your head, like, whoa, was I the reason that they split up? Right. So that was always... How did you get through that, though? So here you are now. You're super positive, super yeah. awesome. You have a great relationship with your parents. How did you get through it? Like, what was the tipping point to where you broke through you stopped feeling like you were alone? Probably the middle of... Even towards the end of my freshman year, because even, like, all throughout middle school and even beginning of the high school... I didn't really, I wasn't, I was outgoing, but, like, to a certain point, like, I kind of was trying to be somebody that I definitely wasn't, I was trying to be happy all the time, and just, like, like, I said somebody that I wasn't, so, towards the middle of freshman year, I kind of just, like, stepped back, and just, like, realized that, like, you're not where, you're not as happy as you should be, because I felt like, if I just, like, stopped putting this, like, fake personality up, that I would be happy, because, right. like, it's not that I don't like myself, it was just, like, I was being someone that everybody expected me to be. So I kind of, like, took a step back and tried to, like, rebuild myself and just, like, find myself. And I started coming here a lot more because at the beginning of freshman year, I took a break. And I was so nervous on coming back. And I don't even know why looking back on it because, like, this was always a second home to me. And right. it wasn't I, – like, I always had friends here and the adults. I'm 15 doing the adult class, and they're yeah. the most welcoming people I've ever yeah. met ever. I've been doing that class since I was like 13. Like, they're, a little, they're a little scared. They're scared of you about the, the power. <laughs> the other night, Coach Mike was training me. He was like, "Oh my goodness, like, I was afraid that I wasn't gonna be able to keep keep up with her." Yeah. Um, isn't it, Isn't it awesome to just sit back and be yourself? Yeah, and like it's the easiest thing in the world. Yeah, and like especially because like the past year, I've definitely gone through friends and like try to figure everything out. And now like my friends now. They're the most supportive people like I've ever met. They're like, they'll sit there like, friends before I'll be like, yo, you should come to my karate class. And they're like, mm, no, I'll pass. And now they're like, when's your next testing? Like, I want to yes. go. And like, I'm meeting people that maybe don't do like, like they like fight MMA. Like there's a junior that right. I know that does it. And he's like, I'm coming. Like, I want to come to your testings. Like, I want to go. Like, that seems so cool. And it's like, and like, even like writing, like nobody expects me to love writing. Right. And like, when I say that, so many people are like, oh my God, let me read like everything you wrote. And so, like, that's such, like, a good... Yeah, it's inspiring. Yeah. And, and it, it is. You are who you are by the company you keep. Mm -hmm. 
and the positivity is contagious. It's like you want yeah. more of it. It's an addiction, you know what I mean? So when you put yourself in a realm like underground martial arts or positive friends that believe you and support you, it's a lot easier to go through life. Like you can pick so many people do fantasy football. They pick these amazing mm -hmm. players and teams, but in your own life, you can make your own fantasy team. You can get around people that you get to select and choose who get to be a part of your team to help Kylie win the championship in life, which is just every day improving yourself, getting better and better. Definitely, and I always remember like, coming to class and you're always saying, like, it's the po like if you're around positive people, your life will be so much more positive. And it was like I was always trying to be the positive person for everyone else, even if everyone else was around me that was negative. And like I didn't realize that like that was never enough until I started hanging out with super positive people yes. in my life. Well, you need, to, you need people to give it back to you. Yeah. You don't want them to drain you. You know, oh, I've noticed a big difference. Um, I just created a, a planner called the Daily Dojo Planner. And the Daily Dojo Planner, it's 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 a um, self-development book, journal, goal setting. It's like a therapist all in one. And I gave it to you as a mock trial to have you go through it as a teenager. Yes. And you have been on cloud nine over yeah. the past 10 weeks. And you got so much more accomplished. But like you said, you start to be happier because you start to focus on you. Yeah. And when you get better, then that's when you become a better friend, you become a better daughter, you know, you become a better instructor, you know, on the mat and helping out. So it always starts with you. And I've seen a huge, huge change in your positivity and, the, and just the way you carry yourself. Thank you. What was the one thing in that book that kind of got you, that journal, that you really enjoyed throughout the whole thing? Um, well, I think the one thing, which is such a small detail in the book, but really made me realize that I have so much to be happy for was every morning you write down what you're thankful for yeah. and that right there was like whoa like because I would sit there and I'd be like wait like I have this but I also have this and like I also have like this so that, much right? oh my goodness I'm rich <laughs> yeah. and it was just like I have so many things to be thankful for even like small things yeah like I don't need, like my cat like, yeah. just, like, <laughs> what's your cat's name Luna Luna only one cat yeah I just oh. have two but I'm that cat person. Oh man, yeah, you know how many dogs you have? A dog. No. You have Reese upstairs, right? Yeah. The yeah. dojo dog. We have a dog here at the dojo named Reese. It's uh, cutest Jamie dog ever. Yep, cutest dog ever. Um, so my last and final question for you is this: If you were sitting across from that nine-year-old Kylie that started martial arts, and you have that magic ball, you know what she's about to go through. Where you are now, what would be the advice that you would give her? to help guide her and make it even easier um, for her? See, maybe just like advice to give her would probably be always keep your head up and just remember that like you're worth it. Like you're here for a reason. Like there's a plan, like you're set in life to do something and it might not be the biggest thing in the world, but it's definitely not the smallest. You're gonna make an impact on people's lives every day. But I don't know if I necessarily would try to make it easier because I know if it was easier, I probably wouldn't be the person you I am be right who now. You are, right? Yeah. But um, so keep your head up Definitely. and ho ho ho! Don't forget the were you here last snow. Night? Don't forget the snow. So it's expecting that things are going to go wrong, yeah. right? And when you anticipate, it's like when you play a little kid in a video game, he destroys you because he knows and plays the game before you. He's able to anticipate where the enemy's gonna be or whatever the, sh whatever the end goal of the game is. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing for life. We spoke about it last night on the mat, haters. It is so much easier to deal with haters when you expect them to write something negative. Yeah. It's like, it's gonna happen. And now that you expected it, you're kinda, it's a lot easier to be prepared for it. Mm -hmm. what, have you ever been on a roller coaster? Yeah. Give me your favorite roller coaster. Oh, oh man. I like all of them. <laughs> Uh, Superman. Superman. Uh, great adventure. Yeah. Right? Alright, so you go on it and now they take the picture. Yeah. When you come around. The first time you're on it, you're like, what? You're, you're screaming, your face looks yeah. horrendous, right? Yeah. You're a nervous wreck. But when you go on that Superman ride five times in a row. You know where it is. Right? It's a less scary because you're able to anticipate the loops, the turns. Mm -hmm. And when that camera comes, how you smi you're smiling, right? You're smiling. Like, you got like a dope picture. It's like the best picture in the world. Like, like, like it was a piece of cake, right? Yeah. No worries at all. And it's because you were able to anticipate what was going to happen and the feeling that you were going to get. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to say, you are an amazing student. Thank you. I'm proud to be your coach. You got so much potential. I'm excited to see the book. Your powerful and positivity definitely adds to what we do here. You know, with you being here, you make the place in the dojo better. So, 
Thank you so much. We got Kylie Jamison on the one and two today on the Powerful and Positive Podcast. Number two, once again, this is Coach Mark the Spark from Underground Martial Arts and Fitness Center, a.k.a. the Growth Planner. Dojo. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have her back on. She'll try it again. Yeah. Hey, guys, thanks for listening in, and you rock, Miss Kylie. Thank you. We're out. <laughs>